Myth. Information shared under Part 5A cannot be shared with the victim survivor. Fact. Relevant information may be shared with a victim survivor to assist them to manage their safety or that of their children. Sharing relevant information about the person using violence may potentially increase the victim survivor's safety. Myth. Information sharing can only occur through a high-risk team. Fact. The information sharing provisions are not limited only to high-risk cases. The same provisions apply both within and outside of the high-risk team. Myth. I can't share information about a child or young person. Fact. The information sharing provisions provide for information about children and young people to be shared when appropriate. There are some additional things to consider when sharing information about a child or young person. Consult the information sharing practical guidance for more information. Myth. I can't share information about a person using violence. Fact. Sharing relevant information about the person using violence may help to maximize the victim survivor's safety. The information sharing provisions allow for information about the person using violence to be shared in line with the requirements of Part 5A. Myth. I need to obtain the consent of the person using violence to share their information. Fact. The consent of the person using violence should not be sought, as this could unintentionally place the victim survivor at greater risk. Myth. Information shared under Part 5A cannot be on shared to any other person or entity. Fact. Information shared under Part 5A can be shared with another relevant entity however can only be used for the purpose of assessing or responding to a DFE threat. Myth. I need the permission of the entity that shared information with me to use the information. Fact. Once an entity is in possession of information shared under Part 5A, that information can be used in a manner permitted by the information sharing provisions. That is, the information can only be used for the purpose of assessing or responding to a DFE threat. Permission does not need to be sought from the entity that first shared the information. Myth. I can only share or receive information under Part 5A if I work in a frontline role. Fact. Working in a frontline role is not a requirement for information sharing. To meet the practitioner's role requirement, your role must include assessing or responding to threats to life, health, or safety, because of DFE. Myth. Information can only be shared if it relates directly to an entity's usual scope of work. For example, I work in a hospital, so I cannot share information relating to a child, as child protection is not the core remit of my entity. Fact. If an entity is in possession of information that may help to keep a victim survivor safe, that information can be shared in line with the provisions under Part 5A. Information sharing should not come from a position of who owns the information, but what information is available to support risk assessment and safety management. For more information, refer to the DFE Information Sharing Guidelines and Practical Guidance. Visit the Department of Justice and Attorney General website for these and other resources.